Welcome to the second video of the project named Academic Writing How to Get Your Research Published. For more webinars, you can check Continuing Education Center and you can check the website esertifica.jomu.edu.tr. You can see more webinars, more courses prepared by me in this certificate system. Now, let's get into the slides. This presentation's topic will be avoiding plagiarism. Here are the outcomes. Those who listen to this video will be able to correctly define the term plagiarism and they will be able to appropriately write citations with correct form, structure, and punctuations. So they will be also able to distinguish between sorts of citations and finally write their own list of references within the correct order and structure defined by the APA style. And you can see the table of contents here. So we will be talking about plagiarism, citations, and writing references. First, let's look at the term plagiarism. To avoid plagiarism, we first need to know what the term is. So. I want you to brainstorm the term plagiarism. Just think about the term and I will give you a few seconds. Then let's see the definitions of definition of the term together. So yes, as you think, it is the act of presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own. So it's kind of stealing something, stealing ideas, stealing the points of others. So it can be either intentional or not. If not acknowledged, you are stealing someone's presented knowledge. There is also, you know, term called self-plagiarism. However strange it may sound, there also is self-plagiarism, which is the term used to describe the action of those who use their previous written academic ideas or points without referring to their previous study. We also need to avoid this self-plagiarism. So, what is not plagiarism? These things do not need citations. First of all, common knowledge. Secondly, field-specific common knowledge. And finally, general common knowledge. So, general knowledge, common sense, field-specific common knowledge, they do not require uh, citations. They, they are not plagiarism. So, how to avoid plagiarism? Simply by referring to the ideas and points we take from another resource. In this way, we can avoid all kinds of plagiarism. That is, use of citations is the way to avoid plagiarism. So, let's have an insider look at citations. What is needed in a citation? Three source, source of information are needed the author's last name and the work's date of publication must always be present present other than that the page number which should be only in direct quotation is the third information that is needed in a citation so let's see the samples of parenthetical citations there are three sorts of parenthetical citations the first one is idea focused. The author and the date are in parentheses at a suitable place 
in or at the end of the sentence. For example, here in parentheses you can see Jesur and Uygun in 2020. The other one is research focused. Only the date is in parentheses. So here the focus is on the research. And the next one is chronology focused. So both the author and the date are integrated into the sentence. For example, in 2020, Jesur and Uygun found that kind of sentences can be chronology focused parenthetical citations. Sources with one or two authors. So here, uh, just be careful about initial and subsequent citations. So when you say Fisher 1999 and in later citations, you can just use the name of the Fisher, especially in the same paragraph. You can use, you can just use his surname without any date. And as for the sources with two authors, you can see two examples of it. One is integrated in the text, in the sentence. The other one is non-integrated in parentheses. As you can see, Jesur and Uygun in parentheses 2020 is the integrated one. And Jesur and Uygun, 2020 in all parentheses is the non-integrated one. If you have the authors with the same surname, then even if the years are varying, use the initials here. So they have the same surname, two different authors. They have the same surname Baldwin, but you need to use their names, initials of their names in this case. What about sources with three authors? So in APA 7, uh, you know, it was a change. And when, when you just mentioned for the first time, you needed to uh, define the author's surnames. But after APA 7, then you will just write the first author's surname and write at all for the, you know, for the following authors. If two or more authors or groups with the same first name is available, then write the second author's surname uh, to distinguish uh, between these two sources. Sources with no authors. So you can check the web and you can find many sources with no authors. Then you will just write the first few words of the title in quotation marks, in italics. And then uh, this will be in text citation. For example, writing strategies. This is the first few words of the title of the web source, most probably. Or if you don't know the author of a text, a check chapter, then you can write the first few words of the title as in this example, second language acquisition. So in, in text citation, just uh, use question marks or in italics, then use the, few, the first uh, few words of the title. If it is an edited work, use the editor's name in the author's position. Then, as in the example, Jesur 2020. So, if you don't know the author of the chapter, then you can use the editor's name here. If you are citing multiple sources, arrange by order of the reference list and use a semicolon between different research works. You can see the sample here. Jesur, Kama, Raze, and Uygun in 2020, and semicolon, Köksal et al., Kama, 2018, again another semicolon, Topkaya, Kama, 2021. So, you will just list in the same way they, they are available in the reference list. 
What about representative works? You will just write E G. So if you want to give example of the risk of some research work, then you can write E G before the source, before the citation of source. So you can use E G for, for sample citation before the parenthetical citations. There have been many reports on the topic. So in parentheses you can say EG and you can give the samples of these reports. And you can also use C also after major work. So you can just cite Roy 1995 and to mention about, uh, you know, after the major work, to mention about more samples, then you can write C also as well. When you directly take another author's words, then you make use of quotations. And the sentence you directly take from another author should be given in quotation marks. Here you can see the example. Hillox, 1982, writes, so in quotation mark, you need to mention the sentence, and then you need to mention the page number as well. What about three dots and brackets? What do they mean in an academic work? work? So three dots means you omit something. When you omit some of the author's original words, use these to indicate that you omitted something. What about brackets? If you need to insert additions into a quotation, use brackets. So here in the example, after the Hillox 1982 writes in quotation marks, the three dots means that you omitted some parts of the text and instead of this part you added current studies so bracket brackets means you added something what about single quotation marks if the material quoted already has a quotation then you use single quotation marks so here their effective filters are, are lowered so it's already quoted in another source that's why the, you should show it in single quotation marks. What about block quotations? For words, for sentences that have more than 40 words, you need to use block quotations. So entire quotation is indented in block quotations. And you need to again specify the page number at the end. If you haven't read the work you are referring to, give the reference for the secondary source. So here uh, in the example you can see that the idea belongs to Kirksal, but uh, you cannot reach the original work of Köksal. You just read this idea in Jesur's work in 2021. And you directly quoted this idea from Jesur's work. And you can check Jesur's work page 21 to see Köksal's idea. And as it is quoted in, then you need to specify the page number as well. So, in the second example, you can see that Gregory, so the idea belongs to Gregory, but you as the author saw the idea, read the idea uh, in Taylor's work. So, you summarized some parts of the work and then uh, you just made use of citations. Here are some useful words. So most of them are verbs and phrases for paraphrasing or quoting. 
most of the time when writing our academic works we just use the same words like claim like offer like finds suggests so recommends here you can see number of uh, academic verbs that you can use while writing your research work maybe you can screenshot and you can make use of them while writing your research works here the last part of the lesson the last part of this video is about writing references in order to write a list of references we use a certain style clearly set and consistent rules that make references comprehensible to the reader is called a style the most prevalently recognized styles are APA MLA and Harvard referencing system but here in the video I will be talking about APA style it's, it's a sample list of references as you see you can see the sample list of references so start the references list on a new page and the word references uh, should appear bolded and centered at the top of the page so reference entries should follow in alphabetical order there should be a reference entry for every source cited in the text you can see the first one and it's a source with two authors and all citation entries should be double spaced after the first line of each entry every following line should be indented a half inch so each journal has its own requirements each institutions each institution has their own requirements to write thesis to write ma thesis and phd thesis so you can check their requirements and you can write your reference list accordingly while referring to the books you can see some samples of the books here for example the first sentence is has more than two authors so you use comma and the symbol of and to just mention here three authors so the second one is an association authored book reference like British Council so the third one is the revised edition okay so you can see in parentheses that the third one is revised edition and the fourth one is a sample of two authored book reference and the fifth one is an edited book edited Kinsella edited this book is the editor of this book and the next one you can see the English translation of a book here the translator in parentheses you can see its translator and in the following one in the following one some authors book published in the same year as before you see Lyons so in 1981 he published two books and the first one is discriminated using A and the second one is discriminated using B so the translation of non-English books names are given in brackets as you see in Piaget's work in brackets the English translation of the book is the origin of the idea of danger in a child and you can see one authored book reference in the Smith's example and the final one final one so you can see the books edition number here fifth edition and this is a book with no author but only the books name given in italics the times atlas of the world so this is the name of the book with no authors and it is the fifth edition of the world 
What about periodical articles? So you can see some samples of you know reference list from periodical articles. The first one is one author journal article. The second one is newspaper magazine article with no author. So you can see the title first. The third one is book review article. So in brackets you can see that review of the book and the name of the book given in italics. And the fourth one is magazine article again. So you can see the mount as well. And the fifth one is the example of more than two author journal article. And the sixth one is about letter to the editor. So again, in brackets, you can see that you, you can see the statement letter to the editor. And the seventh one is newspaper article. And if you have no date, if it is in press, you need to mention it in parentheses that it's a journal article in press. And two other journal article, again, you can see Lipinski and Bender. And finally, you can see the book review article with no title. So here, Mali uh, written, has written a book review about critical language awareness. So it's, it's not an article, that's why the book review is shown in brackets and it's written in the journal called Applied Linguistics. So what about parts of edited collections? Here, here you can see an edited book and it's edited by Euler and Richards and the name of the book is Focus on the Learner. And the name of the chapter is Linguistic Theory. Chapter and its author in an edited collection. You can see here the sample of edited collection. And you can see in parentheses EDS, editors, Euler and Richards. And you can see in italics the edited collection's name. So, what about a chapter with more than one author? Then again, you need to make use of the symbol of end. What about CD rooms? So, the first one is article from CD room encyclopedia. So, the second one is newspaper or magazine on CD room. And the third one is abstract from CD-ROM and the last one is the sample of dictionary on CD-ROM you can just stop the video and uh, analyze you know how they are given in the reference list what about web documents so the first sample is the web document of a journal article and the second one is corporate author like American Psychological Association so it's, it's the author is the institution and the third one is with no authors so in italics the name is given the title is given so as we don't have any names of the authors and then in the other samples you can see a newspaper article and in the last one you can see a web document with no author or no date so in parentheses you need to specify nd which means no date what about other sources you can just click you can just pause the video and see how they are written in apa format so the first one is a government report and the second one is a publication with no date. Here is an edited book and the editor is Malachi. And we don't know the date. So you need to specify N and D. And what about dissertation? You need to mention that this is unpublished dissertation. So in McGill University and in Montreal. So the last one is film and videotape. 
These are the textual references that I used in my presentation. And these are the visual references that I made use of in this presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me. So this is the second video of academic writing tips. And the next video will be about how to get your research work published. See you in the last video of our webinar.